Max Verstappen is continuing to win titles and break records, but along the way, he's also broken the thing that got him there in the first place, the Red Bull Driver Academy. Let's look at what's changed inside the Red Bull Driver Academy compared to the past and decide if there's any way that the team can fix it moving forwards. What was once the best academy for young drivers, making their way through the lower formulas, into the sister team and all the way up into Red Bull, has become a chaotic mess of young drivers that even when they're great, can't get a look in over old school favourites. Then when they do get into the team, they're criticised by the higher ups, destroyed by the main driver and completely demoralised, only to be shipped off to another team on the grid. Carlos Sainz, Alex Albon, Pierre Gasly come to mind immediately and I'm worried that Yuki Tsunoda and Liam Lawson might be next. At the start, the Red Bull Junior team was formed in 2001. It was a driver development program that was put together by Red Bull as they started to enter the world of Formula One. And it was an attempt to identify potential future racing stars in open wheel racing. And I was a massive fan because it was giving a lot of drivers the financial backing required to actually make their way through the tiers of motorsport, which is something that stops a lot of drivers fulfilling their potential. But Red Bull were offering funding and support for promising young drivers as long as they were willing to be part of this driver program and then in 2004 it came to fruition Christian Klein became the first Red Bull junior to race in Formula One he was part of the Jaguar Formula One team and although his only point scoring finish in his debut season was a sixth place in Belgium he was good enough and reliable enough that Red Bull could start to see the potential of their driver academy coming to life it was an underwhelming start but a start nonetheless Jaguar were then bought out in November 2004 by Red Bull and renamed Red Bull Racing who else but Christian Horner would take the role of team principal, but Christian Klein would actually stay with the team representing the Red Bull Driver Academy for the team's first season on the grid. And Christian Klein's best finish was a fifth place at the season finale in Shanghai. Again, showing the promise of the Red Bull Driver Academy straight away. And Red Bull was so enthusiastic about being part of Formula One and their Driver Academy that they actually decided they wanted a second team. So one year later in 2006, Minardi was sold and in its place Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso functioning as a junior team to Red Bull Racing. And the aim was to develop the skills of promising young drivers for that senior Formula One team. Team, so they didn't have to rely on drivers coming from other teams or straight in from Formula 2 into that main team. It was kind of a Formula 1.5 for Red Bull, if you will. It gives you a chance to put drivers into Formula 1 without risking them in the main team straight away, which needs drivers that are capable of winning races and winning championships. And this worked, most notably with Sebastian Vettel. Vettel was a test driver for BMW Sauber. He did make his Formula 1 debut with the Sauber team, but was still linked to the Red Bull Driver Academy. 2000 2007, that would mean he'd move across to Toro Rosso. 2009, he'd jump up into the main team, and the rest is history. 38 race wins, four drivers' championships with the team. He was just a generational great, and when your academy is producing this kind of talent, it's clearly working, and there were more to come, okay? They weren't all of the great level of Sebastian Vettel. There were drivers like Buemi and Verne and Al Jassari, but drivers like Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz showed that the junior program was still finding talent of a really high level. Level. And I don't think anyone would be too annoyed. Let's say Max Verstappen doesn't exist and the driver lineup at Red Bull was Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz. Even right now, that is an exceptional driver pairing, but... Max does exist, and the whole system changed when Red Bull found Max Verstappen. Back in 2014, after he'd won European Formula 3, Max actually chose the Red Bull Academy over the Mercedes Academy. I think because Red Bull clearly had no hesitation in giving Max his big break and getting him into the team, like even if it meant moving other drivers aside, whereas Mercedes would have probably put Max on a similar trajectory as we've seen from George Russell, like the Red Bull Academy just made sure to get him into the main team almost instantly. Like 2015 saw Max and his rookie campaign at Toro Rosso, aged just 17 years old. He was alongside Carlos Sainz and the two were pretty close but Max started to prove his value immediately. Then Danny Kvyat was dropped from Red Bull Racing after just four races in 2016 to make room for Max Verstappen, something that Danny Kvyat never really recovered from. Verstappen basically ended his career and I think that's where the Driver Academy problem started. Putting all your eggs in the Verstappen bucket and his recruitment has made an immense impact on the rest of the Red Bull Junior program. 
program, changing their junior driver program's reputation from generous backer with a route to the top to ruthless tyrants of the Formula One grid that give Max Verstappen a teammate to chew up and spit out. And I genuinely feel like Red Bull no longer have an interest in producing good drivers for their own Formula One team. Like Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley made their way onto the grid next from the Red Bull pool of drivers. And Hartley was a strange choice. He was gotten rid of after a season. I think that was fair. But Gasly has shown he is more than capable of being a Formula One driver at the top. And he would now be a great number two to Max Verstappen. But when he was given that shot, he wasn't ready. He was rushed into the seat, put under an insane amount of pressure and given the impossible benchmark of matching Max Verstappen. And then Gasly was replaced with Alex Albon. And Albon unfortunately suffered the same fate. He was rushed into the seat too quickly, put under an insane amount of pressure and was never going to match Max Verstappen. But in hindsight, Gasly and Albon have now shown that they would be solid second drivers to Max Verstappen. Like imagine if the Red Bull driver lineup next season was Max Verstappen and the current form Alex Albon. That would be a really good driver pairing. But because Max was ready at 17, now every driver they produce has to be ready as soon as they step onto the grid. And other drivers have started to notice. Hamilton suggested when Nick DeVries lost his seat, it wasn't just down to pure lack of performance. I mean, Nick DeVries was kicked out after just 10 Grand Prix of his rookie campaign. And OK, he didn't show a lot of pace, but I think we can agree that that's pretty ruthless. And Hamilton inferred it was just a reflection of Red Bull's modern nature, saying that's how Red Bull works. And I agree, Red Bull won't care that they've ruined Nick DeVries' Formula One chances because Max Verstappen is still winning and that's what matters to them. Of course, Verstappen's championships are payment for this ruthless nature, but I would argue it's still problematic and still something that Red Bull need to address moving forwards. Like, Sebastian Vettel won championships without breaking the system of drivers. Aljassari, Buemi, Ricardo, Verne and Kvyat were all hoping for a Red Bull racing future, which Sebastian Vettel was the benchmark against. However, the system holding it all together underneath still felt like it was working. You could argue that actually Daniel Ricciardo was the Sebastian Vettel replacement, and it's not been that way with Verstappen. So far, no other driver has come along that's even close to Verstappen, to the extent that we deem that second Red Bull seat as cursed. In fact, the signing of Sergio Perez just underlined how broken the system is, the fact that the team is producing quality drivers. I mean, almost half the grid is linked to Red Bull, but they couldn't use any of them. And then this season, we saw the same thing. They needed to replace Gasly at Alpha Tauri because he finally escaped Red Bull. Albon had already jumped ship and found a home at Williams and didn't want to come back. And they had no talent in Formula 2 that they deemed fast enough. So they pick up Nick De Vries, a Mercedes driver. That went horribly. And again, they had nobody in the pipeline to replace him, opting for an out-of-seat Daniel Ricciardo. Then the chaos continued. They gave Lawson a shot with the Ricciardo injury. He proved that he probably would have been good enough after all. So the Nick De Vries contract was a complete waste of time anyway. And Liam Lawson should have probably come in at the start of the 2023 season. And then we're looking into the future of Red Bull and need a Sergio Perez replacement. Yuki Tsunoda isn't trusted enough. Liam Lawson will once again be off the grid despite his talent because of Daniel Ricciardo. And for that reason, it looks like Daniel Ricciardo will probably be the driver that ends up at Red Bull, meaning that the Red Bull driver program has led to the main team having the same driver lineup it had in 2018. If your junior driver program has produced no drivers that can go into your main team in six years, it doesn't work. And for me, the Red Bull junior team program probably needs a complete overhaul. First and foremost, someone other than Helmut Marko has to be in charge of it. He is a dinosaur. He should not be in charge of young drivers. And he clearly just doesn't know what he's doing. It's unacceptable that he's got himself into a situation where he's hired someone in Nick DeVries because he had no junior drivers. He then didn't work out. So he sacked him off almost immediately to rehire an older ex-driver who was then outperformed by his rookie replacement when he got injured. And I understand that a system that creates greats like Vettel and stop in every generation is something special but ruthlessly cutting the underachievers that then actually go on to be very very good racing drivers means that the talent pool is just growing weaker and weaker every season and it's extremely high turnover of drivers because Max Verstappen is setting these abnormal standards just means that other future talents will steer clear of Red Bull especially when Aston Martin and McLaren and other midfield teams are starting to pump a lot more money into their young driver programs and it's not Max Verstappen's fault, but him being at Red Bull has completely destroyed their academy. And I'd love to know what you think. Like, will Red Bull be able to fix this driver situation? Or will the next five years see the same kind of chaos that we've seen in the last five years at Red Bull? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. And 
If you enjoyed this video, I also put together a video on Max Verstappen, who I think could match him in that RB19 car. So click that link and I'll see you over there. Thank you.